Hi guys, for today we will do international economic integrations and yeah, the first thing that uh, we do for today before directly going to economic integrations, we'll do free trade versus protection, forms of economic integrations and the impact of economic integrations. Now, what is free trade? Free trade implies there are no restrictions to trade. That is, the goods can move from one country to another country freely without any government intervention. In economics, when we talk of goods, it means services also. Now, the supporters of free trade argue that it is beneficial to all the countries. It increases GDP and GDP of all the countries and therefore it is a positive sum game rather than zero sum game. Early economists, they considered trade to be a zero sum game, but then classical economists like Adam Smith and David Ricardo considered international trade to be a positive sum game that is both the countries will benefit through trade. Then it increases consumers welfare because consumers get wide variety of goods available in the market. It improves the efficiency of local firms and the opposite of free trade, which is protectionism, this leads to destructive trade wars like we have trade war between USA and China going on now. And this is destructive to all the countries of the world. Of course, it is destructive to the two countries which are involved in it. So free trade is better for all the countries of the world. Now coming to protection, what is protection? By protection, countries have controls over international trade. They have tariffs and non-tariff barriers. Now, why do countries need to impose this? They say it is to protect their industry and that is protection. Now, why do they need to protect their industry? Their industry can also compete with the global firms in the global market. According to some of the economists, the first argument for protection is infant industry argument. That is, if your industry is new, you need to give protection as you need to protect an infant. Then second argument by the supporters of protection is unequal players. There are unequal players in the market. Competition is among us the equals, but there are developed countries who are developed, their GDP and per capita incomes are very high and there are large number of underdeveloped countries, third world and fourth world countries. So it leads to competition among unequal players and therefore these countries will not be able to compete with them. It leads to inequalities of income and wealth. Big corporations will become more bigger their profits will increase while smaller industries may be closed down. So it leads to inequalities in income and wealth. It, small companies will not be able to withstand the competition from the bigger companies. There are chances of loss of jobs in the home country. If home country companies or the industries cannot survive the competition from the foreign players, then they have to close down and that will lose, lead to loss of jobs. It leads to BOP deficit. BOP is balance of payments. That is, if there is free trade, people will import more, export less. And if people will import more and export less, there will be BOP deficit. And the last argument, it is needed to protect against dumping by foreign countries. So foreign countries sometimes, they dump their produce in our country at throwaway prices. And once this 
our country's industries are closed they become bankrupt and they shut down then they can charge monopoly prices and for this the countries need to protect by giving protection to their own industries so this is about free trade and protection now it has been argued by all that trade is good for all and most of the countries want to trade but they want to set up certain uh, integration among just few selected countries some of the they do not want to have free trade with all the countries of the world maybe regional blocks they have their own treaties and their own agreements so there are various levels of economic integration and the first is economic and trade cooperation this is the beginning for trade cooperation countries in enter into various agreements for economic and trade cooperation liberalization and also to counter terrorism the first uh, level they don't enter into an into any agreement but there will be treaties and in the second case they enter into agreement to reduce the tariff barriers the examples are ecowas ecowas is nothing but economic community of west african state the countries include benin burkina faso ghana etc and then we have gstp uh, gstp is global system of trade preferences and the members have agreed to reduce tariff and non tariff barriers and the last example is comesa this is common market for eastern and south africa so all the eastern and south africa member uh, countries are its members then the second level is the free trade agreement now the difference between this and the earlier is in the earlier one they had reduced tariffs in this case they remove all the cross border tariffs and non tariff barriers the examples are nafta and lafta what is nafta nafta is not american free trade agreement it includes us canada and mexico and lafta is latin american free trade agreement now in this free trade agreement they remove all tariff and non tariff barriers among as the member countries but they have their own barriers against non members they can decide their own tariff barriers against the non members so they do not have common tariff barriers against the non members and then comes customs union in this case countries not only eliminate tariff barriers among themselves but also apply common external import tariff for non members that is the difference between this and the previous one so in this case they have common import tariff with the non members but in the previous one they had their own import tariffs the examples are caricom and cacm they may also negotiate as a single country in international organizations like wto with the non members so what they do is when there are negotiations under wto so they act as a single country so they have better negotiation they can have better negotiation their negotiation strength will improve caricom is caribbean community and common market and cacm is central american common market now the next one is common market in addition to free trade among members and uniform tariff policy that is the previous two for non members in common market it involves elimination of all restrictions on cross border investments movement of labor technology transfer sharing of capital resources 
right so in this case actually the factors of production that is labor capital technology management is also freely mobile they can move from one country to another country without any restrictions and the next one economic union it is a much higher level of economic integration where there is not just free exchange of goods and services but also common monetary policy there is stability in exchange rates and interest rates and sometimes common currency also like euro european union is the most common example for this and the last one is political union as a culmination of economic integration finally countries may agree for a political union a common parliament may be created as in economic union there is a common central bank for the european countries in the same way there can be a common parliament among us the member countries who work in synchronization with individual countries legislatures so these are the different forms of international economic integration starting from the lowest to the highest the highest is the political union now coming to the effects of regional integration first we will do benefits the first benefit is the trade creation impact if there is no economic integration the country may be having tariff with all common tariff with all now with the formation of regional economic integration at least with the member countries it will reduce the tariff so trade is created with the member countries so this is trade creation impact there will be greater consensus in the international organization since the members will act as a one unit there will be political cooperation also maybe for the control of terrorism and with the trade employment opportunities will also increase and in the economic union even labor is freely mobile so wherever there are more opportunities labor can move freely so it may create more employment opportunities and another way in which more employment opportunities are created is since the capital also moves freely wherever there is need the companies can be set up capital can move from one country to another country and there can be more employment opportunities now coming to negative effects the first is trade diversion impact we had trade creation there may be trade diversion also like we assume that the country has got common external tariffs and with the tariff if it is not importing that product from any country then it may start importing from the member countries but if there is some other better producer which is able to produce at a cheaper rate then the trade will divert from this more efficient producer to the inefficient producer that is the trade diversion impact so it may create inefficiencies in production there may be shifts in employment from one product to another product from one country to another country and the last threat is loss of national sovereignty like in the final political union there is common parliament and in the economic union there is common central map bank common monetary policy so it leads to loss of sovereignty as well